firstly, good day to you all. This is the first in a series of lecturettes concerning the detestable European Union. This first lecturette is majorly an introduction, however. I'd also like to take this opportunity to note that these lecturettes, or mini-lectures if you'd prefer, are not exhaustive. The general aim of them is to give the inquisitive individual an overview of particular aspects concerning EU affairs. In other words, the aim of these lecturettes is to inform the willing participant of the other side of the story, something which is very often ignored or irrationally rejected by Europhiles. I do not wish to partake in conspiracy theory, and I'd like to say that I am a dog who holds no time of, for such a concept. Uh, the majority of the information contained within uh, these lecturettes will be based on empiricism and on the appeal to authority to which all of the referred and referenced scholars throughout the lecturettes possess. Uh, I wish to use this first lecturette to demystify a misconception perpetuated by Europhiles and that is their fallacious claim that the citizenry of the United Kingdom has already had their say on continued membership of the EU. Of course, they do this with reference to the 1975 referendum. Though, as many of you already know, the 1975 referendum was uh, pertaining to the EEC, or rather, the European Economic Community, or the Common Market. What the British citizenry thought they were voting on was a trading association. And I'll re reiterate that last point. The British citizenry were under the impression that they were voting on a trading association, or as the name implies, a common market. Uh, the European Economic Community. The question posed, the one uh, from which the British electorate inferred the connotation of a trading association, was this. Do you think that the UK should stay in the European community? Uh, and then bracketed, it says common market, which of course gives the connotation of uh, uh, an economic trading association. Uh, to which the majority responded yes. They responded yes, they wanted to stay in uh, what they thought was merely a trading association. It should be noted that uh, the government of the time advanced the fallacious conjecture that British jobs were under threat if membership was not continued. So, in other words, in order to get this yes, the government of the time actually deceived the electorate. Now, if I were a, um, uh, a working man, um, I'd never been to university, uh, I, I didn't care for politics, and, and I uh, read that my job would be under threat if I did not vote yes to uh, maintain our position in the European Economic Community, then, you know, I would vote yes, because I wouldn't want my, to lose my job. And this is how a lot of the electorate felt. And so, uh, of course, they decided to vote yes. They were deceived. Now, a slight digression here, if I may. But doesn't that sound like a similar argument postulated by uh, the Europhilia camp today? An argument that fallaciously states that millions of British jobs would be lost should Britain leave the EU. Of course, this is a complete lie. A lie which will be discussed in a further lecturette. However, let's continue our discussion. We've already deduced that the British public were lied to. Though, these lies started long before the referendum, as I will now exhibit. Look at the inconsistencies posited by uh, Edward Heath. Um, Edward Heath, of course, the former Conservative Prime Minister, who himself took us into the European Economic Community. Well, in 1970, on the 25th of February, he stated that there will not be a blueprint for a federal Europe. So therefore, the, the electorate uh, would think that uh, national sovereignty would remain primarily in Britain and it would not be breached. Uh, however, then, in 1972, as Heath began to take Britain into the EC, he stated that 
there is no question of any erosion of essential national sovereignty. So already, as he started to take us into the EC, uh, his certainty on uh, no erosion of national sovereignty started to waver. However, the same man, Edward Heath, in 1991, when asked by a reporter, the single currency, a United States of Europe, was that on your mind when you took Britain in, referring to the European Economic Community, to which Heath replied, of course, yes. Can you see those inconsistencies? He lied to the British electorate. He lied. I mean, of course, we shouldn't obviously be astonished, given that most politicians seem to lie these days. But the fact is, he lied so much about a very, very important issue. National sovereignty, British sovereignty, has been ceded and ceded and ceded because of this man and his treasonous actions. Though, going back to the referendum itself, it is clear that that referendum was on, or what the public thought it was on, a trading association, a common market, uh, the European Economic Community, with other European states. Uh, the UK now finds herself incarcerated by a political union. A political union which has the power to legislate over British citizenry. A political union which bears no legitimacy. This is especially so given that no Briton has ever had their chance to voice their opposition to it under a referendum. This is no longer an economic entity, this is now a political entity with which, within the years, by the years, as they go by, British sovereignty is, is given away and abolished still further and further. What makes the three parties, the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives so scared to exercise real democracy? Why don't they exercise real democracy and give the British electorate a chance to legitimise the European Union? If Europhiles are so convinced that the, that the citizenry legitimately wants to be a part of the European Union, why don't they, too, advocate a referendum on continued membership? You and I know why. It's because, as all the polls and even the EU's own survey provider, Eurobarometer, suggest, now the British public would undoubtedly vote to leave the disgusting, undemocratic entity that is the EU. That is the end of the introductory lecturette. Thank you for listening. And as I have said at the start, this is not intended to be an in-depth analysis, but rather it is intended to demystify fallacious thinking on the part of Europhiles, as well as providing general information about the totalitarian European Union. Thank you for listening.